for many, the world is a place to play it safe, to do what's expected, where the green is what you move with and not against. For others, the world is a different place. It's where you chart your own course, and daily tests of character, dedication, and resolve are met head on, not sidestepped. It's a life where the only thing certain is uncertainty. It's not a direction many choose, but for a few, there's no other way. Men and women who live their life on their own path aren't just living their lives. They're living the life that defines them, who they are, not what they are. I remember, clear back in grade school actually, a friend of mine that him and I would sit around for hours and plan how many traps we would need to move to Alaska and live in the bush and trap for a living and gold pans and all that stuff. We used to fantasize like that constantly. I'm from a logging town, lumber town. I knew that there really wasn't any future for me in that. That's not what I wanted to do. The guys that go to work there, a lot of them are lifers. Um, they're the tavern outside the gate down there that when I go back to my hometown, I can go to that tavern and the same people are sitting in the same bar stools that they were 40 years ago. That's not for me. Construction has always interested me. And in about 1980, construction just stopped in western Washington, and that's what was driving the economy. A buddy of mine was living up here, and he said, oh, there's a lot of construction work in Alaska. And I said, okay, I'll call you from the airport. And I think he thought I was joking, and about three weeks later, I called him from the Anchorage airport. I said, uh, come pick me up. Seriously, you're at the airport? <laughs> and that's basically how I got her. I guess part of what drew me to this life of adventure is the remoteness of Alaska. People just really can't fathom how big Alaska is. So remote. Um, when you get dropped off by a small plane in the middle of nowhere, especially if you're on a drop off on foot, and you watch that plane fly away, it's uh, kind of a humbling feeling. You're not likely going to walk out of there. That pilot is the only one probably on the planet that knows where you are. Everything that you need to survive is in your backpack and in your head. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time understanding the loving wildlife, but on the other hand, killing it. And unless you're a hunter, that's something that you really probably can't understand. I don't, I don't know how to put that into words. I love wildlife, and I'll be the first one to save a baby duck that's walking out in the middle of the road. But I'll be the first one to pull the trigger on it six months later when it's flying. I love wildlife. Uh, great next to the potatoes and gravy. <laughs> How else do I put that?
I don't know, maybe by some people's definition, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Not in the sense of the X Games, uh, the guys that jump out of airplanes or jump off the side of a mountain. That's not the kind of adrenaline I'm, I'm into. The adventure of just seeing new places, um, I hear a lot that you guys are crazy. It's just part of life to us. So we don't think twice about it. Barren down caribou. I think that represents the spirit and the wildness of the north to, to me. That's what made me move here. Normally I come down here and get my brain going in the morning. Oh, these are boat screws. Uh, there's a lot of places closer that I could hunt caribou. We hunt for the for the adventure, uh, to get away from all the people. The months and months of preparation is a lot of it. I actually look forward to that. I, I cuss it when I'm doing it, but um, the time spent working on the boat, the trailer, uh, the truck, uh, packing gear. In reality, the minute we come back from this hunt, the preparations start for a year from now. I look forward to this trip every year with mixed emotions. It's a long trip, long grueling trip, but it's a beautiful drive. I, I love the drive. Uh, as I get older and cr more crotchety, I don't quite enjoy the <laughs> road trip part of it as much anymore, but that's all right. Most of it's dirt. Um, you got to take the good with the bad. This is uh, all part of the grand adventure of caribou hunting on the North Slope. We're in the interior of Alaska now. We're a long ways away from the coastal influence weather and whatnot. This is a gold mining area. It was a lot of activity here back at the turn of the century. Uh, gold miners in 98, the Klondike and all that stuff. There was a lot of activity here. Fifteen more hours of driving, boys. Just reached, officially, the highest spot, I believe, in the Alaska road system. This is the top of Attigan Pass. Um, from this point on, all rivers flow north. This is it. The north slope is that way. I've been all over the world. Um, I've been to Africa. We've been to Africa. We've been to Hawaii. We've been to Mexico. I've been all up and down the East Coast, California, Texas, you know, all those places. Within 10 days, just about maximum, I start feeling homesick. I want to go back to Alaska. Alaska is my home. I can't imagine living anywhere else.
suppose it would be inaccurate or unfair to say that I'm a trophy hunter. It wouldn't really be accurate to say I'm a meat hunter. If there's a big bull caribou with a nice rack and a small bull standing side by side, I'm gonna take the big one, of course. But if I am out hunting and all I see is a small one, I will shoot it. I'm not gonna have tag soup because I didn't see a big hat rack. Uh, that's not why I hunt. I, I hunt for the adventure, I hunt for the memories. They know we're here. They know we're here. Back me. You got it. All right, 275 yards, Tommy. Oh, hang on, he took off again. Okay, he's standing sideways. 300. Okay, 301 right there. You got her. You up big time. Yeah. Hang on, she's gonna lay down. There she goes. Okay. Grandpa power. <laughs> yeah. Crusty power. Camp mate. <laughs> Every detail of your life growing up and leading to this point shapes how you are at this point. If the house was to burn down tomorrow and all the taxidermy burned up, I would still have the memories. If the, if the computer crashed and melted and I lost all those electronic images and pictures, I still have the memories. The memories you can't take away from me. The trophies are a bonus, the meat is a bonus. What I really am is a collector of memories. Great memories with great people and great friends. That, that's what I collect. I, I don't have a lot of regrets. I, I don't know that there's a whole lot I would do different. This is the life I live. I apologize to no one. Um, I am who I am and I'm going to continue to be who I am. <laughs>